Welcome everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today um, for feeding, uh, Feed Our Families in Western Art New York rally. Um, we are uh, uh, organized by Hunger Free America and the Human Services Council to speak out on behalf of the 4.5 million New York State residents now struggling with hunger. Um, and to begin this event, we have a word from our CEO uh, of Hunger Free America, Joel Berg. Hello all, thanks so much for joining us. And just a reminder, this event is open to the press and I see some of our colleagues from the media are on this. So this is obviously all on the record. First, I wanna thank the Human Services Council and the Invest in New York campaign for working with us on this uh, event. And I thank so many of my distinguished colleagues, our wonderful public servants and elected officials here as longtime friends and colleagues for joining us. You know, I've been going to uh, budget hearings for a few decades now, and often groups come before the legislature, come before the city council and say, give my group more money, give my cause more money. Uh, and, and then the legislators say, but how? And they say, well, that's not our business, it's your job. Well, that's not our belief. Our belief is that advocates need to also explain how things should be paid for. And we're explaining very clearly how things should be paid for in the time of the greatest crisis our state has faced in, in decades. That's why we strongly support the Invest in Our New York Act, a package of six bills that would raise billions of dollars uh, for social services through equitable tax reform. Just, just a few words and I'll be uncharacteristically short just because we have such a packed uh, agenda. In this crisis, we have 4.5 million of our neighbors in New York State living in homes that can't afford enough food. 4.5 million New York State residents are struggling against hunger. At the same time, we know that billionaire wealth has skyrocketed in this state. And frankly, it's a bit obscene that 4.5 million of our neighbors are struggling against hunger and the wealthiest somehow managed to get even wealthier. Now, speaking just on behalf of Hunger Free America, we don't believe in punishing people for their success. This isn't any sort of revenge, but the bottom line is we all need to pay our fair share. Every billionaire in this state got to be a billionaire in part because tax dollars funded most of their employees to go to public schools, because tax dollars fund their goods and services to be transported over government roads, through government ports, through government uh, tunnels, over government bridges, uh, through government airports. Uh, they get extra help from government in protecting their properties with government firefighters, sanitation, police officers, etc. And I point out that when Dwight D. Eisenhower was president of the United States, the top marginal tax rate in America was 91%, 91%. And most wealthy people paid it because they knew it was their patriotic duty, as it is the patriotic duty of all of us to pay our fair share of taxes. When I was growing up in Rockland County, my father taught me, you never take tax deductions you don't earn. You always pay your full share of taxes because you're not ripping off some amorphous government when you're not paying your fair share, you're ripping off our neighbors. And today, this is beyond just theory, beyond, this is beyond just civic rights and justice. This is about a major crisis, 22.9%, one in four state residents, as I said, 4.5 million New Yorkers can't afford enough food. And because of that, uh, we have uh, the biggest hunger crisis in modern times, and yet we're told there's a, a budget crisis in New York. They almost ended the one outreach program for SNAP benefits, what used to be called food stamps benefits in New York because of this. Every dollar we spend on SNAP access generates uh, $20 worth of federal benefits coming into the state. If we're all about generating more federal revenues for the state, why in the world would we not be fully funding efforts to bring all those revenues into the state that also fight hunger? The state was actually shut down our WIC outreach for pregnant women and children. Again, at a time when billionaire wealth is soaring, the state of New York cut off a program to enroll more people in a federally funded program that only helps low-income pregnant women and children. Where are our priorities, for goodness sakes? We've called for the state to spend $650 million more fighting hunger this year, 50 million increasing benefits access and increasing direct food distribution through programs like HIPNAP and Nourish New York, 
but also $600 million for a program to aid people not eligible for SNAP now, uh, certain immigrants and certain people who earn a little bit above uh, the income cutoff. And before I close, I will just point out that equals exactly 920, one 923rd of the net worth of just a few dozen New York billionaires. Let me repeat that. Just a few dozen billionaires in New York have 923 times the money of the $650 million we're calling on the state of New York to dramatically reduce hunger in New York State. It's just a question of fairness. It's just a question of all of us paying our fair share. And it's a good investment in the economy. Hungry workers can't work. Hungry children can't learn. Hungry seniors can't stay independent. That's why this isn't just spending. This is an investment in our future. And that's why we're so honored to so strongly support the Invest in New York campaign. Thank you, Emilio. And thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. And now we're actually going to play a video from uh, our community members from our Food Action Board program, um, and they'll tell a little bit about their story. Hello, my name is Gladys Gomez. I'm a resident of the Bronx. And despite what you may think, no, I am not a teacher. I am a mom. I'm also a volunteer in our community. I'm here to ask that you please, please stop any cuts to public services. Our community was hit very hard by COVID. And unfortunately, we're going to be going through this for a lot longer, even after it ends. Many have lost jobs. Many have lost family members. We have lost resources of all kinds. And it's extremely heartbreaking when we were once considered one of the richest countries in the world and we struggle with hunger. There are many families that are struggling each and every day with the typical question of what's for dinner. And in some households, we really don't know. We are um, getting help with food that is being offered by schools. We would like for it to continue, but we can only do so with your help. PEBT was a godsend because many families are considered middle class on paper, but we are very, very close to being poor. And those that fall under poor are even lower on the line. We're asking that you please consider going ahead and giving the funding of 50 to $70 billion into public services, which will help not only communities like the Bronx, but all those families that each and every night have to really think about that question of what's for dinner. We have been receiving help from organizations like Hunger Free America, Hunger Free NYC. And while that's great, they need the help in order to help us. So we are asking that you please consider helping these organizations so that they can go ahead and help these communities that are in need. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Natasha McCray, and I am a member of the Food Action Board at Hunger Free America. And I'm here making this video to implore New York State to invest the 50 to $70 billion into various services that are much needed. One of those is our fight against hunger. There are so many hungry New Yorkers, especially after pandemic. So what I would like to see this money go to is increasing the universal breakfast and lunch programs for all children in New York State, increasing SNAP benefits for families that are entitled, and to also increase WIC benefits because these programs are a safety net to help families so that they are not starving. So this is money that should be used to help New Yorkers. I also think that this money should be used to increase services that have been affected by the pandemic. Some of these neighborhoods are very vulnerable right now and cutting services to these neighborhoods would cause an undue hardship. So please consider investing 50 to $70 billion inside of universal health programs, universal lunch and breakfast programs for children, and also putting a dent in 
hunger in New York. Hi, my name is Prioska Galicia and I am a member of the Food Action Board at Hunger Free America. As a volunteer and advocate for the low-income community in the Bronx, I kindly ask the New York State to invest 50 to $70 billion into food services that are crucially needed in the community. One of the main and major issues is our fight for hunger, especially with the current pandemic, with kids being at home and parents being without a job, and the elderly left to depend on themselves, it has been harder to put food on the table for many families. And programs like WIC, SNAP, and Senior Meal Distribution, like Meals on Wheels, need to be funded. It is proven that when kids do not receive at least three healthy meals a day, they tend to not be productive and affects them in the long run. Being that it is already hard to find healthy options in the community, it becomes more of an obstacle that healthy options tend to be more expensive once we find them. Now this makes families break their budget and go above and beyond just to get a simple vegetable, a simple fruit, a simple apple a day, and it's not possible. And this is a factor as to why a major part of the low-income community is obese or has a history of diseases and disabilities. Programs that provide food like WIC SNAP and the senior food distribution programs are what majority of the low-income communities and families depend on. Now, our community cannot step forward if our main support to live is being snatched out of our hands and if our fight for hunger never stops. Um, yeah, absolutely. Let's go to Assemblywoman Jessica Gonzalez Rojas. Hi, thank you, Emilio. And thank you to everyone that's here with me, uh, all my colleagues, all the activists, all the folks on the front line fighting against food insecurity. Uh, we know that New Yorkers right now are going hungry every single night. And as Joel mentioned earlier, there are 120 billionaires that have made nearly $90 billion during this pandemic. And that's just not okay. We know that the coronavirus pandemic exposed the crisis of food insecurity in a way we have not seen ever, but it's important to note that even before the pandemic in districts like mine in uh, Western Queens, Jackson Heights, East Elmhurst, Corona and Woodside, which is home to communities of color, working poor immigrant families, they've struggled with this reality day in and day out. And we know this crisis is worse for families with children. And in New York State, nearly 60% of Black families and more than half of Latinx families reported food-related hardships. I got to volunteer at the Love Wins Food Pantry um, over the course of the pandemic. Um, and that's a food pantry of volunteers who are queer and trans community members who they themselves were facing food insecurity but decided to come together and band together and ensure that they were putting a, you know, their, their volunteer time um, and addressing food security in their community. And we give out probably about 500 boxes of food every single Friday. Mm -hmm. And the lines get longer and longer and longer. So it is critical that we pass the invest in our New York package of bills. I'm a proud co-sponsor of all six bills we have to address the income disparity in the state. We have to address the food insecurity of this state. And we have to address and ensure that every single person in this state, in my community, can live, work, and raise their family with dignity. So I am thrilled to throw down with y'all. I'm thrilled to fight with y'all. And let's make this happen. Thank you so much. Great. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. And um, we are going to do our best to show the videos during the event. But uh, for now, let's move on to Assemblywoman Linda Rosenthal. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Assembly Member Linda Rosenthal. I represent the Upper West Side, parts of Hell's Kitchen in Manhattan. And I'm the newly appointed chair of the Committee on Social Services. So I'm so happy to, to be here with all of you. I know I've worked with Joel Berg for years and years. And over time, we've been talking about food insecurity and people weren't listening. 
And now the chickens have come home to roost, so to speak. If you look at pictures from old time Russia, and if you look at pictures from the Great Depression, you are seeing what we see now in 2021, lines of people winding around the blocks of all neighborhoods, but especially neighborhoods like the ones represented by Assemblywoman Jessica Gonzalez Rojas, but also in my neighborhood on the Upper West Side, people lining up for food. How in this richest state, in this richest country, can we allow this to happen? And government is here to work for the people. So when we saw the, all the huge unemployment, yet the frontline workers uh, were out there helping people as they and their families went hungry. How can we allow this to happen? And, and the answer is we cannot. Uh, this crisis has laid bare the problems that everyone on this call, on this uh, Zoom have known, but everyone else wanted to deny. So there's a solution to food insecurity, and there's a solution to uh, lack of housing. There's a solution to no funding for education, but most important, people need to eat to survive. So there's a, a package of six wonderful bills that I'm a co-sponsor of that would raise $50 billion for this state to plug every single hole that we have identified. And it's the only, it's the, it's the right thing to do. It's the only thing to do because during this pandemic, the state government cut by 20% essential programs uh, that human services providers had to struggle to meet their mission and their obligation, but they did. But it's our responsibility to ensure that no one goes hungry, especially in this in this site of abundance of food. Mm -hmm. And so I'm so happy to be with all of you to fight, to make sure that we live up to our ideals in this state. Excelsior, ever higher, yes. With food in people's stomachs, with jobs for everybody and with housing for every single person. Thank you. And great health care. <laughs> that too, that too. Thank you so much. And um, next we're actually gonna go to State Senator Luis Sepulveda. Hi, uh, good afternoon at this point, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, when we talk about food insecurity, you need to go no further than the district that I represent, which is probably the poorest senatorial congressional district in the United States. Um, so if people were suffering food insecurity in the city, you can multiply that times seven, and that's what we have in New York, in the, in the Bronx. Um, we have been, uh, myself, my staff, other leaders, we have distributed thousands and thousands of pounds of food uh, because people uh, need it in a bad way. I witnessed myself uh, the beginning of pandemic, middle of pandemic, uh, looking in people's eyes and seeing human suffering. Uh, seeing people having to decide whether they're going to pay their rent or whether they're going to get food, whether they're going to purchase their diabetes medicine, uh, their insulin, whether they're going to purchase any other medicine that keeps them alive or pay their rent or buy food. And in the richest industrial nation in the world, in the heart of Wall Street, uh, we should never see that kind of hunger in New York State. We shouldn't see it anywhere in the United States, but more particularly in the richest city in the world. And I see it every single day. We have to pass uh, legislation, uh, both at the state and federal level, to feed so many people, to feed so many children. Uh, there's nothing to break a person's heart more than seeing a young child uh, malnourish a young child who's suffering because he or she is hungry. Um, if that doesn't motivate all of us as leaders in this state and in this country, then I don't know what will. Uh, there are uh, legislation that we're passing. Uh, I know the Senate, uh, we just passed legislation like last week uh, to make the Nourish New York program permanent. And that's going to ensure that certain surplus agricultural products are provided uh, as food relief to food relief organizations uh, at com a very, very competitive wholesale prices. So that's going to help not only people that are hungry, 
but farmers and the economy. So uh, I'm looking forward to working this session uh, to provide and fight for more tax dollars, uh, more monies in our budget to fund uh, programs that feed those that are hungry. Um, I do it with all the energy in my soul uh, because uh, it's brought me to tears sometimes when I have visited or distributed food myself throughout the county of the Bronx and seen these long, long lines of people, our seniors and our children, uh, where this box of food or this bag of food is their only uh, nutrition and sustenance for the week. So uh, thank you all for what you're doing here. Uh, thank you uh, for your efforts. Thank you, Joel, uh, for the wonderful work uh, that you do. Thank you for the Food Action Board members, all of you, really for, for really helping my county, the poorest county in New York State. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if we could go to State Senator Brad Hoylman. Thanks so much. It's good to see my colleagues here. It's good to see Joel and Wayne and others, Rebecca, people who have been working on this issue. Um, let me just say that uh, I represent uh, a part of Manhattan that uh, has a lot of resources and uh, a lot of companies have been contributing to the food crisis, the crisis where, you know, four and a half million uh, New York State residents are struggling with hunger uh, through philanthropy. And that's fantastic. Uh, being living uh, in my district, which uh, is uh, an arm of Blackstone, uh, delivered more than a million pounds of groceries uh, to um, deserving residents. Uh, but, you know, there's more, there's a more direct way to get that kind of food on the table. And it's not just relying on the comfort of strangers and large corporations. It's actually a government responsibility to ensure that every member of our communities has enough food to eat. And the only way we can do that is if we raise the revenue to make that possible. And the call to action today is pretty clear. We need to pass the invest in our New York proposals because fellow New Yorkers are going hungry and we're sponsoring these bills, uh, including one of mine that would repeal the Trump corporate tax cuts. Some of those same companies that have been acting magnanimously by donating food received billions of dollars worth of tax cuts over the last four years under the previous federal administration. In 2017, the Republican Congress passed those tax cuts, which reduced the federal corporate profit tax rate from 35% where it had been during the Reagan administration all the way down to 21%, a massive windfall for corporate interests that blew a hole in the federal deficit and left people frankly hungry. We need to claw those tax, back, cut, tax cuts back and impose a new 14% corporate income surtax and automatically adjust the state tax if Congress raises the federal corporate income tax. So our state is home to 120 billionaires with over $600 billion in wealth. We can do better for the most uh, deserving, poor and underserved people in our communities. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator. And, um, you know, part of the reason that our community members uh, send in videos is because they're working. Um, you know, they're still essential workers and they're still trying to do their best um, in their communities. Um, so I'm going to try to play at least one video um, on their behalf. We got four submissions. Um, this one is from Bryce Rosado. One moment. No sound. No sound? Okay. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, of course. So we'll, 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 we'll be ready to send those out via tweet and social media. Um, and so unfortunately we won't be able to play them right now, but um, next up we have State Senator Robert Jackson. Hi everyone. 
first, uh, let me thank you for putting this together, uh, focusing on the needs of all those that are uh, that need help as far as food insecurity. Um, as a state senator, besides advocating for it um, in the state senate, uh, I've actually gone. I see Maria Lazaro is there, and. No, Senator, I think you're frozen. <laughs> no. Frozen in a nice way. He's smiling and everything. Um, up next, we will have Assembly Member Harvey Epstein. And but hope there's other pantries there in which go. I go to help. Like, good morning. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Good. Okay. So it's important that we do everything we can to help those that are in need. Uh, so I've gone to several other food pantries to help out, uh, but also I've advocated loud and clear. Many of you know my involvement in education, and I say that education, uh, while it's important, that's not the primary thing. I, I put it this way, the primary thing is make sure no one gets evicted from their apartment or evicted from their home. That's number one. And then number two, we have to deal with making sure all of the families not only in New York City, but the entire state of New York has food to eat. And that's it. this is some of the basic things that we need. And then the third thing, as I mentioned after Linda Rosenthal spoke is healthcare. Uh, because we've seen so many situations in New York City where people are like going off and attacking people and pushing people on the subway. It's just crazy, crazy, crazy. So, uh, and then I tell you how important education is. So, but the most important thing is not to be evicted from their homes, uh, food insecurity and healthcare, in my opinion. And I know some of you may differ as far as priorities, but to me, that's what it is. So anything that I can do in the state Senate fighting for this, and obviously I have one of the bills, the personal income tax bill, one of the six bills and in invest in our New York. Uh, and I said, yes, I want my bill to totally be passed unanimously by the Dems and the Republicans, both in the Assembly and Senate. But let me tell you, the most important thing is the end result. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so the much. The end Senator. result of the six members of the New York family. So uh, I thank you for allowing me to come in. Obviously my internet connection is unstable, uh, but that's just the way it is in today's technology. So thank you for allowing me to come in, Wayne and everybody else, and Joel, and and I. Good to see everybody on this Zoom call. Absolutely, we're all dealing with these technical issues these days. <laughs> um, next up, we have Assembly Member Harvey Epstein. Thank you, Emilio, and uh, nice to go right after RJ, who's uh, been a fighter for you know, uh, education issues. <clears throat> I just see my good friends here. I see Maria, who I've known for a really long time, and Wayne, who have been advocates for the, the needs of uh, people in my community and across the city and state. So really the question we have to answer is, are we gonna continue business as usual? You know, the, the food lines in my neighborhood have more than doubled. We, um, I do a, you know, a, a lots of food changes. One Father's Heart Ministry, they went from serving 500 people a week to 1,000 people a week. And, you know, that's just one example of dozens of examples in our community where we do food lines. And so the, the answer is, are we going to continue just to accept the income inequality in our society, accept the food insecurity that one out of four children have, or are we going to do something different? And I know me and my colleagues believe it's time to do something different. And the way we do something different is to take the people who have the most ability to serve by giving more resources and make sure we transfer the money for people with the highest need. I don't wanna see food insecurity in our city and the state. I don't wanna see anyone struggling every day just to make sure they have access to the internet to go to school, make sure they can't, and they can't pay their rent, their utilities get shut off. We get these stories every day from constituents in my district. We have a plan that invests in our future, invests in our children, invests in education and higher education, 
invest in social services, invest in job training programs, invest in people to make the difference. So we don't have to say in this moment, we did exactly what we did every other year and every other decade. So I stand here to say, we will invest in our New York. We just need you and all our colleagues to stand with us to ensure that the $50 billion comes to the table to allow us to deeply commit to serving our communities. That's what we're about. That's what we need to do in the next three weeks. There's only three weeks. This is one of those moments in history and you need to decide where you are and where you stand. Can you stand with us? Can you stand in support of communities and people who don't have resources and stand for the future? Thank you very much for being here and thank you for all what you do. Thank you all for standing with us. Um, and next up, we have New York City Council Member Matthew Eugene, followed by a number of uh, service providers. Uh, so, um, Council Member? I don't think he's on. Okay, no problem. Um, so, I know Maria Lizardo, Executive Director of NIMIC, is on. Yes, hello, everyone. I'm Maria Lizardo, the Executive Director at NIMIC. And we are a settlement house serving 14,000 community members who reside in Upper Manhattan and the Bronx. I must say that uh, it is unconscionable that in 2021, we're talking about people going to bed hungry, that kids don't know where their next meal is coming from. And during this past year in 2020, we saw the gap between the haves and the have not get even wider. Jeff Bezos made $70 billion in 2020. His net worth is $186 billion. While we saw an average increase of 60% in food bank users, that is unconscionable. Food insecurity has not, is not a new thing for the community members we serve. Since 2017, we have been partnering with the Westside Campaign Against Hunger. And once a month, they brought their mobile food bank here to Limic and we served 125 community members a month. Here comes COVID and that had to change drastically. Since May, we have expanded our food pantry services and we serve 300 families a month. We have provided over 8,000 pounds of food. We have provided over 8,000 pounds of pet food. That's right, pets need to eat too. And our families should not choose between feeding their cat and their dog or feeding themselves. We have provided PPE and it is time for us to invest in our New York. So our demand is we need $1 billion just for, to deal with food insecurity, to support food banks, to make sure that the people on the ground, nonprofits like CPC, like NIMIC, like so many others can continue to support our community members. And we need to expand outreach for SNAP and WIC. We need to make sure that every person who is eligible for these benefits applies. I'm with you, Harvey. I don't wanna have this conversation next cool. year. This conversation has to be different. Let's do this. Let's shake things up and let's invest in our New York. Thank you. Love the fire. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, we're actually going to go on behalf of the Food Action Board members. Um, we're going to have Filomena Acevedo, our Director of Organizing, speak for a moment. Hi, good afternoon. And thank you, each one of you. Thank you, everyone, for really helping us really raise the voice. I am the Director of Community Organizing on behalf of Priusca Garcia, Natasha McCray. Raisa Rosado and Gladys Gaume, these are the people who was gonna to speak to you on behalf of what they go through in the community. We live here in the South Bronx and we go everywhere in the fight area and we definitely fight it on behalf of hunger. Today is important because this 57 million dollars is gonna be spent and we want to be spent where it's most needed in the school <laughs> meal, food meal, uh, 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 snap, we, uh, breakfast in the classroom. This is needed to feed our children and our community. Thank you. Thank you. And we definitely need your support on this fight. Thank you and great afternoon. Thank you, Emilio. Thank you so much, Filomena. And next up, we have Wayne Ho from Ch uh, President of the Chinese American Planning Council. Uh, thank you, Emilio. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, I run the Chinese American Planning Council. We are the largest Asian American social oh. Nonprofit in the country, and yeah, well, you're, you're over 60,000 New Yorkers uh, each year. And uh, before the pandemic, we were serving uh, food to through Meals on Wheels to 100 homebound seniors. Since New York went on 
was in March 2020. He started serving over 3,000 uh, individuals every day, over 3,000 meals, where uh, we had to address all the increasing needs in our community. Um, research has shown that in the Asian American community, nearly a 7,000% increase in unemployment claims. In a survey that CPC did of our community members, about 70% either lost their jobs or had significantly reduced work hours. So everyone is struggling to make ends meet. And we've been able to provide food during this time in our community centers in Queens and Brooklyn in Manhattan because of the generosity of donors, of partner organizations like the Street Vendor Project and private foundations in order to give out food to our community members, culturally competent food to our community members, um, but it is not sustainable. We cannot do over 3,000 meals every week to our community members. Um, we've already been decreasing that now to about 1,000 meals, and it is sad. Um, the lines wrap around the block. And when this first started, we had seniors coming to us uh, waiting to get their one hot meal a day most times. And now we have uh, adults, we have families coming to us, uh, kids who are in daycare, kids who are, in, are young people in high school are lining up often getting their one hot meal of the day. It's unconscionable that in a state like New York, at a time when we know that the ultra wealthy have uh, increased their wealth during a pandemic, that we are struggling just to serve hot food to about a thousand New Yorkers and the need is so great. We cannot balance the budget on the backs of the seniors. We cannot balance the budget on the backs of the hungry. We cannot balance a budget on the backs of children. We need at this time to invest in our communities. We need to invest in our New York. We need to have more revenue to make sure that no one goes hungry. Everyone should be fed. Everyone should be healthy. Everyone should be housed in New York. And this is the time now that we need to see the leadership in the state assembly and the state senate. And thank you to all the allies and champions who are here today. Um, we on the community, we support you and we'll make sure that these package of bills can pass and we can invest in our New York and invest in our communities during this time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Wayne. And next we have Debbie Chatterjee from Community Service Society. Debbie Priya. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks, Emilio mm -hmm. and Rebecca, uh, for, for having me. Uh, very excited to, uh, to be it's here. It's a little low. Oh. Is this better? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. uh, is this better? Is this better? N no change. Very. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you need a moment? Okay, let me try. No problem. Next, we'll have then um, Council Member Eugene. Are you on? Oh. Thank you so very much. Uh, uh, my name is Matthew Eugene, uh, and I'm the City Council Member representing District 40 in Brooklyn. I want to first and foremost uh, thank the opportunity to thank all the wonderful people who work together, work hard to make this. Uh, Zoom uh, uh, conference uh, or rally possible. I want to thank uh, you know the uh, Free America, the Human uh, Services Council, my colleagues in government, and also invest in our New York City. Let me let me put it this way, you know, food. When we talk about human being, there are many many uh, services, many needs facing human beings. And food is a major capital one. Food is a human right. If we are talking about keeping our people healthy, keeping our community healthy, you cannot ignore our obligation to feed people. We cannot ignore our obligation to make sure that everybody can get the food that they need for themselves and for their children. Even before the crisis, Many people, millions of people, they were already struggling to bring food on their table. But now the situation is critical, is harder, it's more difficult for them. 
And I think that this is our moral responsibility of us in government to make sure that we do everything possible for people to have food on the table. And I commend all of you for what you are doing. What you are doing, you are raising the voices of the people who cannot speak. You represent them, those people who are suffering, those people who are in need of food. What you are doing, you are doing exactly what they couldn't do, what they cannot do, but make sure that we and government who, who, who are responsible, we do the right thing to make sure that, that those people can have food for themselves and can have food also for their children. And again, it is our moral obligation to do that. And we have the resources to do it. We do have the resources to do it. And we have to make sure that we put the resources in the, the area of food pantries and also in all the, the, the services. And I commend also all the organization all day that come together to feed people in New York City. When you go, you see the lines, they are so long. The lines are long. And even people were doing good before, they're all in trouble, they're facing difficulties. It is the right thing to do. And I commend you and I thank you for what you are doing. And I'm supporting this. We are going to show that we as community, we as people, we believe that that should be supported. The money should be invested in order for people who are providing the services, they can have the staff, the necessary staff to provide the services. They can have the resources to provide the services for all people in New York City can have the food that they deserve, not only to be healthy and to be able to overcome this difficulty and to keep our city moving forward. Thank you so very much to all of you. God bless you and stay safe. Thank you so much, council member. Um, we're gonna try Debbie uh, again from Community Service Society. Hi, Emilio. Can you okay. hear me? Okay, yeah, I can hear you, okay. Okay, great. Um, uh, thanks uh, for having me here. Uh, I'm Devitriya Chatterjee. I'm a senior policy analyst with Community Service Society, and I'm excited to, hear, to be here to highlight the, the acute problem of food insecurity facing New Yorkers. So Community Service Society has an annual survey of low-income New Yorkers, uh, which uh, is the sort of the longest running survey of its kind that tracks opinions and well-being of low-income New Yorkers. And in this uh, survey for this year, what we see is that almost 60% of low-income New Yorkers suffered from food insecurity, where they were forced to seek out free meals from friends or family or food pantries or religious organizations or go hungry. Uh, the crisis is worse for families with children. More than two-thirds experienced food insecurity as the pandemic and the related recession led to unforeseen levels of job losses. Um, the prevalence of food insecurity was worse among communities of color. 40% of black families and more than half of Latinx families reported food-related hardships. Uh, the experience of food insecurity, why are we here? Why are we talking about this? Because it imposes an immense physiological and psychological toll and contributes to long-term poor health outcomes, as well as educational outcomes and job success outcomes. The consequences are especially pernicious for children whose physical growth and mental development might get stunted by inadequate nutrition. We have been working closely with IONI, the Invest in Our New York Coalition, to make these revenue raisers a reality. Last month, we report, released a report where we made the case that increasing the taxes on the richest, wealthiest New Yorkers is needed, not just to address issues like food insecurity that we are discussing here, but also to put in place structures that address long-term increases in inequality and, are, and all the related problems that come with it. With the state facing 15 billion in deficit, human services always get to be on the chopping block first while the billionaires have greatly expanded their wealth. So the only message I would like you to take uh, home would be, do not think of this as assistance. I would like you to think of this uh, raising revenues for food insecurity, not as assistance, but as investment. So we are investing in, in, in our youth, we're investing in our children, and we are investing in our New York. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie.
Um, and then now we're going to have Christina Singh, Director of Communications for Neighbors Together. Hi, everyone. Thank you so, so much for having us. Um, Neighbors Together is a soup kitchen and local community center in the heart of Brooklyn. And we have been feeding our community for the last 39 years. Uh, we serve 80,000 meals per year to low income and working class families and individuals. We serve parents, children, uh, seniors, adults, people on fixed incomes, people who are homeless, people who work full time jobs and still can't make ends meet. We are a lifeline at Neighbors Together and a center of support for so many. However, because of the pandemic, we were forced to shift from serving two meals a day just down to one. We know people are in desperate need of food because the number of people coming to our lunch meal has nearly doubled since the pandemic began. We provide hot meals to local family shelters um, two times a week, but they're incredibly grateful and uh, we're happy to be providing what we can, but we should not be the social safety net. Government should fill that role. We cannot rely on charity and nonprofits to fix systemic failures, and especially not during a crisis of this magnitude. Food insecurity and hunger have increased dramatically since the beginning of the pandemic, but we have yet to see any significant help from our state government. We know that the effects of COVID will last for years. Uh, we all know that on this call and a one-time infusion of money won't be sufficient. We need New York State to create sustainable streams of revenue by passing the Invest in Our New York platform. The Invest in Our New York platform is made up of six common sense taxes on the ultra wealthy, that will raise 50 billion in annual revenue for New York State to fund critical services like emergency food, housing, and education. We're calling on our state legislative leaders to show true leadership in this pivotal moment of crisis, and that includes the Invest Our New York bills in the one house budgets. Mm -hmm. The people of New York can't survive on what emergency food programs are scraping together. Healthy, nutritious food should be a right not a privilege and our state leadership can make that possible by investing in this platform, by investing in the invest in our New York platform. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for speaking. And then uh, we have uh, Rachel Cohen from ACE. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Um, ACE has for decades been working with people who are previously homeless and getting them back into employment and economic stability. Um, I think COVID really, really, as other people have said, has has put a spotlight on, on the problem. We, I have had clients who have fought for years over incredible barriers to get jobs that are $15 an hour and then COVID strikes and they either lose their jobs or even have their job just cut by a couple of hours and all of a sudden they cannot put food on the table just by having a couple hours of one shift cut. So we're not even talking about people losing their jobs, but a couple less dollars and all of a sudden you can't provide for yourself or your families. I have clients who are serving food to others all day long as essential workers and cannot go home and provide food to their own families. Um, I've been working with a client today who just, uh, thanks to uh, our partner, CSS, who's on this call, uh, they gave us some funding for groceries for this client last year when he lost his job. He's been doing a couple of temp jobs trying to get by. It's a year later, his temp job just ended. And now he, once again, it's a year later, he doesn't have money for groceries again. These are really hardworking people. These are dishwashers and porters and cleaners and cooks and couriers and retail workers that are working so hard for themselves and their families and there's not enough food for them. And I, we can do better, you know, this is not acceptable. Um, our program, which focuses on getting people jobs has spent a lot of COVID having to redirect our resources to show people where's the lo local pantry. Um, we have staffers who bring food into the offices because we know that our clients are going hungry. Um, I, I really, I'm somebody on the, who's on the front lines every day. I rarely get to be on these kind of calls and I really, really appreciate having an opportunity to, to be a voice for my clients who are, they're struggling. And I, I uh, anything I can do to be part of this, I, uh, I, I welcome that and I, I thank you guys for giving me the time. 
And thank you for speaking on behalf of clients and, and just showing up for the work. Um, and then last but not least, we're gonna have our closing out with Rebecca Balin from the Invest in Our New York campaign. Thank you so much. And thank you, um, Emilio, um, Hunger Free America. Thank you to Community Service Society and Human Services Council for helping to organize this today. And a huge thank you to our legislators on today, especially our bill sponsors and, and fighters. Um, and, and folks who are speaking out on behalf of folks who Emilio said could not be here today because the reality is that the folks we are fighting with and for are working, are working to feed us, are working jobs and are still going hungry. And I wanna uplift something that both um, our organization said uh, and our legislator said today and really underscore it, which is we are serving the role of government and government isn't giving us the money and we are relying on charity. We are relying on random acts of kindness. We are begging for funding constantly just to serve the needs of our communities and not beyond the organizing and advocacy we all do. We are serving as the government institution without government funding and these organizations get praised for it and lauded for it, but they don't want that. They want to be able to serve their communities and they want their community members served with their basic needs. And so what we need y'all to do, folks who, we need our, as we said, we need our legislators to, to keep pushing. We need Andrea Stewart Cousins and Carl Hasty to pass a one house budget that includes tens of billions of dollars in new revenue so that we can feed our families, so that we can educate our families, so that we have housing, safe housing, um, healthcare, everything that we need because we're tired of fighting for scraps and we're tired of providing with very little things for our community. We're tired of seeing people line up around the block for food. That is horrible, it's heartbreaking and it could happen to any of us without a social safety net. And so we need, we need our leaders in the state assembly and Senate to act and we need Governor Cuomo to pass the Invest in Our New York Act and we need you all to take action. So we'll be circulating a social media kit after this. We'll be circulating the stories of folks who couldn't be here today. We ask that you elevate, we ask you to listen to their stories and we ask you to call your reps today um, and make sure that they hear these stories and that it's not just lost on the Zoom. And thank you so much for being here today and speaking out. All right, thank you to all our speakers, all our community members, all our viewers and have a good rest of your week.